the conversion of two Sikh girls in Kashmir have left the Sikh community shocked and angry. But unfortunately, not all Sikhs want to talk about this. Those who have sold their faith and their people to the Islamists may even be willing to pay such a price to retain the banami with Islamists. These are the Khalistanis who have chosen to be either quiet or to downplay, justify forced conversion of Sikh girls. After all their love for Pakistan, monetary links with the Pakistani ISI are known. Despite Sikhs being expelled ruthlessly from East Punjab and the little minority still being hounded by Islamists and their daughters still facing the dangers of being abducted, once again, Khalistanis have backstabbed their own. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national and social political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Diksha and in this video, I will tell you about the ugly nature of Khalistan sympathizers, which has emerged yet again. Let's begin. After facing much flack from the community as a whole, the girl who was forcibly converted to Islam and married off to a much older Muslim man has been brought back by the family and married to her community member and freed from the clutches of love jihad. Reportedly, when the Shiromani Gurdwara Prabandha committee had dropped the towel and left the girl's family to fend for herself by quoting that she didn't want to come home, the family took the matters into its own hands. It is worth noting that in cases of love jihad, more often than not, the girl is brainwashed to an extent that the families have it tough persuading them to see the reality. The courts, with their hands tied behind, can only pass a ruling based on the statement of the girl. In this case, the girl claimed that she had willfully eloped. However, rather than making the girl and the family sit across the table, SGPC seemed more intent on making sure that the relation between Sikhs and Muslims stayed in place. SGPC President Bibi Jagir Kaur said, As Sikhs, it is the family's duty to educate and encourage their children to follow the Sikh way of life. Given that in a democracy one can only practice their religion, no one should force anyone to convert. We as the SGPC can preach about the religion, but no one can force another to adhere to the doctrines of a religion. The pictures of the wedding prove that the girl is much happier and content after meeting her family than being married off to an older Muslim man. It is pertinent to note that Bibi Jagir Kaur has shown glimpses that she is also on the side of Khalistanis and is a closeted hardliner. On the 37th anniversary of Operation Blue Star earlier this month, Kaur has justified the chanting of pro-Khalistan slogans at the Golden Temple. She was quoted as saying, this is an expression of Sikh youth's josh. As Singh Sahib stated, the youngsters demonstrated their sentiments and healed their pain on the occasion. She added further, this josh suggests that the Sikh community is alive and acts independently. A community losing josh is considered dead. When the youths raise these slogans, they demonstrate that they are competent to fight the enemy, so we have no objection to it. One development that was observed all throughout the incident was the reluctance of higher bodies in the Sikh community to outrightly condemn the Islamists who routinely engage in love jihad. As reported by TFI, Shiromani Akali Dal leader Manjinder Singh Sirsa was seen coaxing and appealing to the Islamist leaders whom he had cheered for in the past one and a half year, rather than being blunt and direct in his statements. Sirsa said, I request local leaders of Srinagar and Mulanas and Muftis to come in support of Sikh daughters. Sikhs were at the forefront ensuring Muslim daughters reach home safely during CAA protests. But no Muslim leader has come to raise voice against the forced conversions of Sikh girls. 
it is imperative to note that Sirsa was one of the many leaders across the country that had taken a dig at the UP government for introducing legislation against love jihad. Sirsa, drenched in the hatred for Hindus, had remarked in a rather mocking way that Hinduism was a weak religion and that it needed a law to save itself. Sirsa had said, How is your religion so weak that they need help of law to save their religion? Having this kind of religion is a sin in itself. That means there are flaws in your religion. You must remove these flaws in your religion. The ones who are religious leaders have flaws. Remove them. During the anti-CA protest and the farmers' protest, members of the Sikh community, by and large, sided with the Islamists, often inviting them to the Gurudwaras to recite the prayers, serve them biryanis and gave them mind-numbingly tepid slogans like Sikh Muslim unity. Ever since then, the Khalistanis who have dominated the space, often masquerading as protesters, have towed the line of the Islamists. After all, a big chunk of funding for Khalistanis comes straight from Pakistan and its notorious terrorist elements.